In the months and the years ahead, you will face the enormous challenge of keeping up with a constantly changing world. You will need to be open and flexible in order to embrace that change. The winds of change will blow, up, blow you off course if you're not anchored by a core set of values. And while circumstances may change around us, values are not negotiable. Defining your values is much more than an academic exercise. It takes time and effort to clarify what you believe in, what puts meaning into your life, and ultimately, it gives you integrity. Some groups of Native Americans envision conscience as a triangular stone located deep within us. And whenever values are violated, the stone revolves or turns. And with each turn, the corners of the stone cut you, giving a tangible sign that something is wrong in your life. But with each turn, the corners wear off a little too. And so if you continue to violate your values, eventually the sharp corners of the stone are rounded off, meaning that your conscience can no longer cut as it was intended to do. In the face of constant change, a sense of values enables, enables us to be resilient, to stay true to the important principles in life that have no borders. Justice, integrity, honesty, and fundamental respect for others. It is important that when we exercise the privilege of making choices, we do so with rigor and with commitment and with full awareness of the consequences that it can have. Commitment and rigor, together with a strong set of values, have been at the center of Chrysler's turnaround. The recent experience that our company has been through could in some ways be helpful to you in your own personal lives. As most of you know, two years ago, Chrysler had been handed a death sentence by the vast majority of financial analysts, the press, and even general public. But instead of accepting this death sentence with the help of President Obama's administration, we rolled up our sleeves and worked intensely to transform our organization and our culture. And we succeeded in launching 60 new products in only 19 months, renewing 75% of our product portfolio. Our market share is increasing, and last Monday, Chrysler announced its first quarterly net income since the company began operations in June of 2009. And hopefully, in short order, less than two years after we receive government support, we will be able to repay every dollar that was lent to us by the American and by the Canadian governments with interest. I'm not, I'm not saying these things to brag of our accomplishments because that's not our style. We know that we still have much to accomplish with earnest commitment and more importantly, with humility. I'm telling you these things to give you an idea of the results that can be achieved when there are clear objectives, a strong motivation, and enormous passion. Our first quarter 2011 results represent more than just a positive income statement they represent the spirit of tens of thousands of people who, having suffered through the crisis, found the strength to pick themselves up and move on. They're a testimony to the pride of Chrysler, a company that went to hell and back and is determined to regain its rightful place in the global automotive landscape. They are manifestations, above all, of the mentality of the team of indiv individuals who are leading the business today. These are courageous individuals with a hunger for challenges and the will to shape their own future. Individuals who are not victims of change, but instead seek it out and often initiate it. Men and women who understand the concept of service, of community, and of respect for others. Men and women with the extraordinary capacity to bring out the best in others, help them build self-confidence and grow as professionals and even more importantly, as human beings. These people are the real architects of Chrysler's turnaround and they're also the best guarantee of our future. And so as I look out at this arena, as I look 
uh, your graduates, your families, and your friends, I think of the historical moment we're living through as you receive your degrees. We need to realize that we are now at a crossroad, and this makes our choices even more important. This is a crucial moment, and the world couldn't need your talent and energies, your passion, and your commitment more. The education you have received doesn't just serve you or your family. It also serves the community as a whole. You are fortunate to have been exposed to the knowledge and ideas of the faculties at this outstanding university, which has demonstrated an open mentality and created a dynamic and creative environment. The approach taken here at the University of Toledo is based on a very specific notion that in the end, the real focus is man and the society in which he lives. This was Albert Einstein's exhortation more than 70 years ago when he said that one should guard against preaching to young people success in the customary form as the main aim in life. The value of a man is in what he gives and not in what he is capable of receiving. The most important motive for work in school and in life is pleasure in work, pleasure in its result, and the knowledge of the value of the result to the community. Einstein was right, because focusing on oneself is a very, very limited ambition.